okay. members of the panel, let's proceed to our first quotation. <laughs> Too long playing records, and a current book goes to Mrs. A.C. Reed of Victoria, British Columbia, for the following. See if you can identify the author. There are countries so underdeveloped today that the gift of independence is like the gift of a razor to a child. Let me repeat that. There are countries so underdeveloped today that the gift of independence is like the gift of a razor to a child. Who said it? Oh, that would, uh, <clears throat> that sounds like, uh, uh, Cranburn. Cranburn? No, Mr. Callahan. Our author says that he has more trouble giving away money than making it, and he's made a great deal. Does this tell you anything about him? Uh, getting a peerage has been a great ambition in his life, and he managed to achieve it before he was 38, when he was 38. Oh, a Lord Beaverbrook? Lord Beaverbrook. That gave it away, sure, didn't it? certainly it? did. Well, uh, <laughs> is, is he the idiot that uh, made that statement? Is about it an idiotic Oh, absolutely idiotic. But uh, I would not expect uh, anything better from Lord Beaverbrook. Mr. Dewhurst. Oh, I don't know. I don't agree at all, Bren. I think it's absolutely true. There, in fact, there are so few countries that have, having been given so-called independence, that know how to use it, that if you look at Africa, or the particular the Middle East, you find them almost all now ruled by cliques of colonels. And everyone knows that a colonel uh, is a fool, and therefore they, they're paying for their folly. You see, the only well, difficulty with that, just a minute there, Brandon, I want well, to have, the, 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 have a the, the, real, in, the, real, interest that, the real interest that you would have in it is that there are a great number of people in England who leave very dull suburbs and they're, uh, uh, they uh, lead a, a rather dull and rather mean existence. They eat horrible food. They eat a uh, sort of toad in the hole and glad to get it. And they suddenly arrive in, in Africa and in India and they uh, get themselves very good jobs. And through the power of arms and armament, and by no other power or by no other right, they, they, the British in Africa are just the same as the Germans in uh, Poland or in uh, Czechoslovakia. Mr. Callahan and then Mr. Olatunji. Just a minute now. Uh, the difficulty no, about on. this business of a nation not being ready for independence yeah usually means that the decision is in the hands of somebody else, you see, not in the hands of the people. Now, when you oh, say... Oh, I don't agree at all. Oh, now, no, look, no. look, wait a minute. When you say so-and-so is not ready for independence, yeah. that means you think he's not ready. That's right. That's right. Well, that's that's right. right. That's now, that's right. all there is well, to it. And usually it's a no, possessor it is, nation. A possessor no, no. nation. No, Brendan that agrees this. with me that Aya, or Southern Ireland, was not ready for independence. Uh, 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 I, I don't know... Excuse uh, me. I don't know... Excuse me. What do you mean by well, Southern Ireland? Now, Southern before you answer, Mr. Mr. Dewhurst. Um, well, well, really I, I, I would say, Mr. Oh, uh, I would say, Mr. Uh, Dewhurst, that if you were attempting to speak French, that you would make an attempt. No, je parle très bien français. Gentlemen, gentlemen, Mr. Oliphant. No, Mr. Bean. In English, happens to be Ireland. Ireland. Mr. Oliphant. I have so many, I've heard many people say the same thing, put the same quotation in many words, but I just want to know uh, who can tell me, uh, uh, who can tell, or uh, actually explain the yardstick of who is ready and when. Yes, that's the point. Uh, this is most important. Uh, underdeveloped countries, uh, how long are they going to remain underdeveloped? Who helped them to remain underdeveloped? Well, there are so many imponderables. Well, I think that in a great many cases, although Mr. Bean won't agree with me, that it was the English that were responsible for leaving great civilizations behind them when they left. For instance, India. Um, you may say we ruled that with a rod of iron and so forth, but we didn't, in fact. We left a decent civil service, a decent army, different, decent foreign relations, friends. Mr. Nehru is a friend of ours. The king and queen have been out there. What's wrong with India, Brendan? Well, uh, I would say about, about India that uh, in England itself, I would say, first of all, that uh, whose opinion do we usually get? Homespun philosophers like uh, Beaverbrook, uh, uh, will put forward this type of shoddy, uh, the, the, this sort of shoddy thought, trust the man on the spot, the old China hand or the old African hand. What is the old African hand except 
some unfortunate fellow who was not able to make a living in England selling vacuum cleaners or something of the sort. But you keep getting has, back to England. Yeah, well, to uh, um, India. Um, Germany's colonies during the war are uh, the, uh, the countries of Germany in uh, raid, such as Poland and Czechoslovakia. She sent very nice Wimbledon types like uh, Eichmann. Uh, and uh, for the first time in their life, these people had servants. Now, I um, happen to like a certain cultivated, cynical society in London. And uh, I don't uh, know um, whether you would be acquainted with, uh, with any of the people I know there. <laughs> Well, well, I think um, we inhabit the same area. I, I have a suspicion. Well, um, you never go down the dark area? Uh, no, I, I, well, I, 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 sometimes, I sometimes go... Uh, aren't we? Aren't we really? But the point, the point, uh, the point of the matter is that you're supposed to... This, this statement by uh, um, Beaverbrook about uh, when a nation is ready for independence. Naturally, the Germans said the Poles shouldn't have their independence. Uh, naturally, the English... In, uh, and also some, some Irish people in uh, Africa, they say that all the natives are not ready for independence yet. But they have always said, uh, every, every imperialist country has, has no, always I really said... Agree. No, Mr. Some... Callahan and then Mr. Olatunji. Uh, look, I'm not interested in what you boys did in London, you know, or whether you no, inhabit the really same not. area or not. The question is, does uh, an imperial power, possessing power, ever do anything for a country? Yeah. And I doubt very much that there's any record of it ever having done so. Well, what did the Romans and the Greeks do? Well, what the, Ro the, the Romans, uh, when, when the Roman power withdrew, the, yeah. the countries all fell to pieces. That's what they did for the individual countries. Well, when, when they left England, what happened when the Romans left? Uh, the point is that there's practically the the, uh, the uh, civilization, whatever it was, the, the, uh, there was in England, collapsed. Well, the the highways, uh, grass grew over the highways all across Europe after the collapse of the Roman Empire. The, the thing is that the, the job of every occupying power is to see that the people do not develop a spirit of independence. Yes. Why did Caesar keep going into Gaul? He licked the Gauls again and again and again, and he was always back licking them. To back Mr. O'Connor up, I simply like to draw up an analogy. It's just like uh, when a child is being born. Regardless of who is the father or the mother, if this baby is not taken care of, if he's not given milk, if he's not given shelter, if he's not taken care of, probably by force of circumstances, either by nature or some other way, this child probably will die. He probably will have become any great writer, any great president, or any great military man, as we know in history. So this analogy fits into the position of these great powers in many other places. Are they really, or did they have the intention of preparing people, these people for independence, whether it's in Africa, Asia, or India? So we found out in history that that wasn't the end, uh, because in the early 17th 